Our next honoree is the most trusted news personality in America, according to a poll conducted by the Hollywood Reporter and the Morning Consult Partnership. Lester Holt anchors the number one newscast in America, but he is not anchored to the seat in a time of crisis. Perhaps his colleague Andrea Mitchell described it best in a recent Washington Post article. She said, I've seen him in the middle of the night in terrible weather in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, anchoring nightly news without a teleprompter and just the notes off an iPad. We're all sleeping in sleeping bags with no facilities, and he's just completely calm. Today he was a little bit late coming to the luncheon because he had to anchor a special report about the school shooting in Santa Clarita, and I have no doubt that you are completely calm. And that's what we need at the anchor desk. Thinking about his field work, though, you might remember how he provided rare access inside Iran, where he interviewed top diplomats and the Iranian foreign minister, Javid Zarif. He provided insights on the growing tensions between the US and North Korea, straight from the Korean Peninsula. He gave us updates from Manchester, from Brussels, from Paris, right after terrorist attacks hit Europe or when his stirring reports from Cairo on the civil unrest in Egypt during the Arab Spring brought insights back home. And then there's his outstanding political coverage, including having moderated the most watched debate in American history, something we're a little jealous at at ABC. Lester had arguably the most consequential interview of the Trump presidency after Trump told him that the firing of former FBI head James Comey was tied to the Russia investigation. Yep. That was Lester. Lester also distinguished himself as the leading broadcast journalist on criminal justice reform with that groundbreaking series, Justice for All. And speaking of justice, it really is impossible to do justice to all of his accomplishments in such a short period of time. But bottom line, he's a great, solid, trustworthy journalist night after night. He's calming amidst the chaos in the world. My husband, Neil Shapiro, who Connie mentioned, worked with Lester for years at NBC, and he said, Lester isn't just the hardest working guy at NBC News, he's also the nicest guy at NBC News. The Library of American Broadcasting Foundation congratulates this true giant of broadcasting, Lester Holt. Hey, everybody. Nice to see you here. Thank you for my cheer squad, my NBC colleagues here who when uh, Connie was speaking and were like, hey, and looked at me like, you're gonna be funny? Like, no, I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. Uh, but it is, it's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you to the IRTS Foundation uh, for this honor and to be, it's especially meaningful uh, to be included in such an esteemed group of honorees and I wanna extend my congratulations to everyone who's receiving this award today. Um, at moments like this, you can't help but think of your career path, how you got to where you're going. Uh, I broke a lot of rules along the way. I was horribly impatient. I wanted to be at the top of my game on my first day. From the day my big brother, uh, who was a local DJ in Anchorage, Alaska, snuck me into the studio one evening, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a part of broadcasting. And suddenly I wasn't listening to radio or watching TV. I was studying radio and I was studying TV. I would hole up in my bedroom uh, as a teenager and read the newspaper into a tape recorder and practice introducing records. I managed to talk my way into a local radio station. I'd hang out there on the weekends. I'd talk my way into uh, a TV station, which is now, by the way, a Hearst station, uh, <laughs> to my friends here. Uh, I'd answer phones. I'd do filing in the public affairs department. And when I wasn't doing that, I would uh, sneak off into the control room or the newsroom and talk to people about what they do and how they do it and get them to share their stories with me. And they would share willingly their expertise and it was gratifying and it spoke to their passion and their enthusiasm for broadcasting. I don't uh, have a formal education uh, beyond, or certainly not a formal uh, journalism education and for that matter I didn't finish college. Um, there were plenty of moments, including those days when I was 22 years old working as a reporter in my first TV job for a network station in New York City that I realized I was standing in the deep end. I was over my head. I made some spectacular mistakes and miscues. I was incredibly immature, and thank God there was no YouTube to memorialize my screw-ups. <laughs> Just click it on again. <laughs> um, but I was saved from going under 
by people who believed in me, who saw some raw talent in me and saw some sense of, you know, this kid's going to learn, he's going to get it. They took an interest in my success, not my failure. Countless producers, cameramen, editors, fellow reporters were there to catch me, to teach me, and to show me how it was done. And there were other people I would describe as true mentors, who not only opened doors for me, but prepared me to walk through them. A few of them are no longer with us, but I can't help wondering what they would think seeing me today receiving a giant award in this industry. My enthusiasm for broadcasting is as sharp as it was uh, 40 years ago when I got in the business. Uh, when I sit at the anchor desk every day, I mentally think to myself, check this out. How awesome is this? Um, those of us in this business are very, very lucky to do what we do. So I always say, let's not forget how we got here. Spot the raw talent around you, tell them your story, make them better. It's an investment in their success and in our success as an industry. And who knows, 40 years from now, one of them might be standing here talking about you. Thank you, everyone, for the award. Appreciate it.